6.7 advanced functions rates of change and trigonometric functions so now you know by now what a rate of change is you've done a lot of them they keep popping popping up at the end of every chapter and this chapter is no exception so today which happens to be halloween so i'm wearing my tattooed arm today for you i'm going to go over an example which is in your textbook it's question number nine and I'm going to use it to illustrate everything you really need to know about rates of change for trig functions. And also I'm taking it up because the textbook answer is incorrect, which may send you down a path of pulling out your hair because you don't know what's going on. And it's all because they made a mistake. So let's talk first of all about the rates of change that can happen on a trigonometric sinusoidal function such as this one here. Now this one is based on, let me just find the example here again. It's based on um, section 6.6, .6, example three. It's talking about mice and owls and the mice to owl ratio in a particular area. So they graph this function. I just found the points like um, they were given. So they give you a minimum and a maximum. Um, we're going to also find the equation of this function and find an instantaneous rate of change on a centered interval. So let's talk first of all about the rates of change. Now the easiest way to do this is if you have a ruler. And what you want to notice is what happens as you go around the curve making tangent lines. Remembering that a tangent line tells you the instantaneous rate of change of the function at a certain point. The average rate of change, remember, is, a, is the slope between two points, such as this. So we can find, as we go down this curve, and I want you to watch what happens to the, well, let's go to this point here. So if I was here, you'd say, oh, the slope of the tangent there is zero, because this line would be pretty much zero slope, right? It's just a nice straight line. Or between the two peaks, it's zero or between the two minimum values, it would have zero rate of change. But as I go down the curve, so watch what happens to my ruler. So it's zero, and then it starts getting negative. And it gets negative, gets steeper, 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 and steeper, until I reach this point here, which is on the axis of this function. That's the most negative point on the graph, the most negative rate of change. And then you can see that as I go around the curve, finding other tangent points, just look at here. So I'm, I'm making tangents to these points as I go around the curve, that it's going to decrease to zero. So the greatest rate of change is going to happen here. That's the most negative and we have zero here and it starts going back up again, like zero, one, two, oh, thank you, light, three, four, five, six. And at this point, it's the most steep again. Thanks, light. And then you can see that it starts decreasing again. So you want to, to be able to identify where the rates of change are the most steep. That would be on the axis for this graph, okay, the on the axis steepest so zero like negative one two three four negative five negative four negative three negative two negative one and zero this is going to be really helpful when you're doing um, sketching graphs of derivative functions when you get into calculus and so again it's going up it's more positive more positive more positive this is the steepest point and it starts changing direction you'll also note that these points here where it changes direction it's like a bad ghost in here today. Um, where it changes direction, these are what we call, this is called a point of inflection. You're going to learn about that and talk about it a lot in calculus. It's where the curve changes from being concave down, see it's down here, to being concave up and then concave down again. So it's, a, it's also called a point of inflection. And the light came on for that. It's a rainy day today very dark Halloween okay so this is the most the greatest rates of change occur here and nothing here you have a slope of zero so you have no change happening at these points here you can also think of that um, just reflecting on another function if we had a, a um, 
parabola. Let's say I drop um, or I throw a ball in the air and it goes up, 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 up like this. And then it comes back down. So if I asked you, where is the greatest velocity of this ball? You'd say, well, when you initially threw it, it was going up pretty fast and it slowed down. And again, if you look at the tangent lines here, so this is your greatest slope. And when you get to the top, it actually has zero velocity. The ball actually stops right here. And then it starts speeding up until it hits the ground. Okay, so that's important that you understand where you can have zero slope, where is your steepest places for um, the rate of change. The greatest rate of change is happening here on the axis, and there is zero rate of change at these points here. I'm just going to try turning this on and off a couple times, see if that helps. Cheap IKEA lamps. Okay, so let's talk about what they're asking you to do here now. It says determine an equation for the curve that models the ratio of mice per owl. So this is just like we did in the last section. We're going to find the equation of this graph. Now, the textbook is wrong on a couple of instances. And the first is assuming that this point here at zero um, was um, the highest point. So, and it wasn't. Because if you look at the graph, you can see that the graph goes from a minimum of 10, 10, to a max of 22. So that's half the graph. So it would have to go back 12 from here to find another peak, which is before time here. Okay, so um, the because this needs to go back 12, and I'm only I'm at my minimum at 10. So 10 to here is 12. So the next um, lowest point here that happens here is going to happen. 24 months later so this is nine here or sorry 10 10 and 24 goes to 34 my units are in two so this would be 34 and 15.7 uh, which they said is the minimum okay so you can figure out what all these max and mins would be okay so this is your minimum point here half the graph took 12 so the full complete cycle is going to be 24 now, if you want to find the axis, remember you have to find the maximum. So let's do the axis here and we'll just write it in down later. So the highest point is 24.7. 24.7 and to that I'm going to add 15.7 and I'm going to divide it by 2. So that's what to 3940.4. I'm going to divide it by 2. And I get 20.2. So this is, um, they didn't give the equation, we'll call it just y, 20.2. That's the equation of my axis. So that's going to be my c value. Now what is the um, a value? So 20.2 here, it goes up as high as 24.7. So 24, so a is equal to 24.7 minus 20.2 and that's going to give me 4.5 so that's my amplitude okay so i'm going to use now uh, this is another mistake they made they assumed it was at its highest point here which it wasn't so i'm going to use a negative sine function can you see why i would because this is where the cycle starts um, on the axis, so it's either negative sine, or I could use a cos function and shift it 22 units to the right, or a negative cos function and shift it 10 units to the to the right. Okay, so you have a choice. I usually pick the one that is the function, um, the closest identification of a positive or negative sine or cosine function to the y-axis. In this case. I'm saying negative sign because there is one complete cycle from here to here. So I'm only moving it over. This is um, four units. So my equation is going to be, I'm going to say y is equal to my amplitude was 4.5. And I'm going to make it a negative sine function, negative sine. 
Okay, now I need to know the period. So the period was half was 12. So don't, don't look from here to here and say, oh, the period's 22. That would be wrong because we're going from, um, we're going from here to here is half of the graph. So that's 10 to 22 is 12 times two is 24. So the period is 24 months. So K is going to be equal to, as we know, it's two, um, sorry, the period is two pi over K. I didn't mean to write the K. I was jump that. So 24 is equal to two pi over K. So K is two pi divided by 24 and that's pi over 12. So I'm going to write four, negative 4.5 sine, I put my k value, pi over 12, bracket, and now I'm going to use t for time. I've shifted it four units, so two, four to the right. So I'm going to subtract four and add the axis. 20.2. Okay, so there's my beautiful equation. Um, sec question B says, where is the, let me see, I'll read it right from the book, use the curve to determine when the ratio of mice per owl has its fastest and slowest instantaneous rates of change. So the fastest rates of change are going to happen on the axis here. That's where your tangent lines would be the steepest. So the fastest rate of change, so it's decreasing here and increasing here, right? If it's negative, it's decreasing. If it's positive, it's increasing. So the fastest are going to be here at all of these circled points. So fastest is going to happen at, what do we say here? So that's 4, 16, um, 30, no, 24 to 28, this 28 is this one, and this one is 40. So 4 at 4, 16, 28, and 40 months from this graph. Okay, where is it the slowest? So it's everywhere where it's zero, zero slope. So that would be here at 10, at 34. Oh, forgot this one here and this one here. Okay, so slowest, you can pick them up yourself here easily. This is not the slowest because we're not at a peak. So we're going to say 10, 22, 34 and 48 months. Okay, and now it says use an equation to find the instantaneous rate of change using a centered interval. Um, use a centered interval of one month before to one month after the time when the instantaneous rate of change is at its maximum. Okay, so the instantaneous rate of rate of change is maximum either here or here. You can choose which one. I'm going to use at four. So four means I'm going to use, use three and five. Okay, I'm gonna just, uh, can I flip it over and remember the equation? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're going to write the equation out again, and we're going to plug in those two values, three and five, and we're going to do a slope calculation. That's all you have to do. So minus 4.5 uh, sine, we had pi over 12, t minus four plus 20.2. I hope that was right. t minus four plus 20.2. Okay, so now I'm going to find y when t is equal to 3 and I'm going to find y when t is equal to 5 because they asked you to do a centered interval and we determined that 4 was the steepest part. So all you have to do is plug these in. I mean this is just calculation, right? 
So if I put in power over 12 and I put in 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so I want the sine of minus power over 12 plus 20.2. And the other one, when I put in 5, it's just going to give me 1 here. So minus 4.5 times the sine of power over 12 plus 20.2. And you would get out your trusty calculator here. So I'm going to do negative 4.5 sine bracket negative. Don't forget the negative is down here, right? Pi divided by 12. They always give you two sets of brackets here. So just make sure you put it in or it's going to say you made a mistake. So I get 21.36. Or, well, let's do 365. That's three decimal places, which is nice. And then I'm going to do minus 4.5 sine of pi divided by 12. Um, okay, because we said 5 minus 4 was 1. And then we're going to add 20.2. That's going to give me 19.03. Okay, so the instantaneous rate of change, this is estimated because we're not doing calculus yet. So we're going to do just rise over run. So 21.365 minus 19.035. And we're going to divide that by, we used, this was t at 3 and 5. So 3 minus 5. So I'm going to do 21, whoops. 21.365 minus 19.035 and I'm going to divide that by negative 2 and I get minus 1.1 1 point, 1 point, about 1.2 so that means that it's decreasing right decreasing at decreasing at 1.2. You don't say decreasing negatively. Like that's just like a double negative. 1.2 mice per hour per month. Don't forget units. So now if you did the same calculation on the other side of our graph, let's say we said the fastest, the fastest is going to be here, so it should be increasing at the same rate because this is the steepest point on this function. So if you did 16, if you did 15 and 17, you should get the very same calculation, except it's going to be positive. Okay, so that's um, rates of change for trigonometric functions. That's the end of chapter 6. Hope you've subscribed by now. Um, I'm hoping that I'll get 1,000 subscribers and get you going on calculus and vectors. Either If not, I'm just going to start planning my vacation. <laughs> Isn't that nice of me? Okay, all the best to you guys, and um, give me some likes, give me some comments. I love reading your comments. All the best. Happy Halloween.